Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new video here on Blair Bosch and welcome to my Peugeot 3008. It's been nearly two months since I got rid of the Insignia for the Grandland and in today's video it's going to be like all the others where I will tell you what I like and dislike about this car and also some of the features that this car has that you guys may be interested in if you're looking for a cheap family car on a budget which uh, that's what this is. Still if you're not interested in an electric vehicle then maybe this might be something to possibly consider so long as it's running correctly which I will uh, explain to you a little issue that I'm having with this car but that'll be later on in this video. Nothing terrible, something that'll get sorted but something noticeable. So without no further ado Let's get into the video on the Grandland. So let's start with first and foremost the actual styling of the car. It is, if you squint hard enough, exactly the same as the 3008, but I quite like it. I think it's quite a nice smart looking car, especially in black. It's got, one of the first things that I like, two front LED headlights, complete LEDs, not just the side lights, which at night time make this car look pretty cool. But the characteristics of the car resembles a lot of the 3008, but uh, I like it, to be quite honest with you. Driving it, it's quite nice. It's not as fast as, uh, as the Insignia was, but uh, then again, I'm comparing what would be a luxury hatchback sports tourer type thing for uh, a big family car like this. That's supposed to be economical, which of course it is for a 1-2 petrol that is. And yes, if you haven't seen in the last video or if I haven't mentioned it already, this is a 1.2 three-cylinder turbo engine, which... It's actually not bad. It's actually not bad at all. Now you may have noticed as well that in past videos I've made fun of this car by putting French uh, music in the background, which some of you guys found quite funny. Um, and to be fair, I do too, to be honest with you. It's, uh, it's just taking the mick out of it. Now, the problem with these 1-2 engines is the fact that these engines are wet belt driven and I'm happy to say that the wet belt on this car has been replaced when I bought the car. Now in my last video I went quite in depth into the differences with the wet belts uh, that this has now been replaced with because this although it's still running on a wet belt it's a different grade of wet belt which means it shouldn't go too prematurely and uh, I'll, I'll put a photo of that up here uh, of what I mean with the wet belt system uh, um, the differences between the material belts so this has got the upgraded belt but because it has an upgraded belt it's suffering with a common issue which uh, it's hopefully going to get sorted but we'll get back to that later so on the inside apologies for also how grubby the car is the car has been in constant use over the last couple of weeks uh which is great because the insignia is still dead off the road waiting for parts and well i've been using my car quite a lot as a necessary function and i can only just imagine if i refuse this and decided to wait for the insignia what a pain in the backside it would have been now this car is now on 45,230 miles when i picked this up it was on 42 and a half and um if that's testament to how much i'm using this car at the minute i don't know what is but on to the second thing that i like the panoramic roof it's a fantastic roof and it's quite cool actually when you're a passenger seat you see all the rain <laughs> running off the roof when uh, when you're driving which is quite cool um my son 
absolutely loves it when it's open and why it's open at the minute there's a downside to it though it gets quite hot it gets it does get quite hot in here <laughs> it's like a magnifying glass right above your head uh, you can close it though but when you do close it it's quite pleasant in here and it's very bright in here i used to complain with my dad how white the pillars and the roof lining were but looking at it now it makes absolute sense because it the insignia was quite a dark place to be in even though that did have a white roof and when this is open it allows so much light to bounce into the car it is pleasant to drive when it is um, and then when it's closed it's not too bad when it's closed either it's not too bright but again it's 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 nice it's it's cozy and for the reason why I've gone for the Grand Land in comparison to the Peugeot or something else is because everything in this car is laid out how you need it to be. Your climate control is there, your settings for the car is here, whether if you want your uh, traction control off, you want to check your tyre pressures, you want to turn off uh, lane departure assist if you want to start stop to stop, turn your parking sensors off, or if you wanted to put child lock on in case little one is running around in the car your lights controls are all up here your radio is right here and one thing i do like which some people didn't get in my last video is the fact that cruise control is right here and you can control it via this and not a sort of a, an extra bit here which you get on volkswagens and citrons and peugeots and all sorts everything is where it needs to be on the steering wheel and your display although analog and well outdated supposedly it's a functional piece it shows me what i need to see i know what it says i can read it easily it's perfectly fine the only thing that looks dated is the controls on the side they look like they've just come out of an astra j type thing but again it is how it's how everything's supposed to be your controls for your headlights are here your dip beams or if you want to adjust your headlights and if you wanted to dim the uh the, <laughs> the speed cluster but everything is easy to use not everything is related to the screen and if i turn the car on which starts perfectly i should add which uh again we'll talk about that later when I, oh yeah, so you've got heated and cooled seats as well, which is quite nice with this car. I'll turn that off because we don't need any copyright infringement. But yeah, the seats are heated and cooled. You've got lumbar support here for your thighs and uh, the controls for the car, which are on this stalk here, if you haven't already figured out. It shows all the relevant information you need to know and again we'll talk about that figure in the middle of the screen in a moment but you can control everything you need on here including your maps uh, when you've got the maps set up you can have it on the screen or you can have it here on your navi which uh, it takes a minute not that i use this anyways this now sat nav i use the uh, android auto options and it is quite a basic screen, although the bigger screen out of the two that you get with the car, you've got your settings here, which uh, you can turn on and off and customise your car, which is quite handy. You've got your call options here when you want to make contact with somebody. And your audios, it has DAB, which means you can hear heart noughties, heart nineties and eighties, which is the best music that you can listen to in comparison to some of the new stuff that they're pumping out which uh, just isn't going to be as nostalgic in future in here you've got receipts <laughs> i'm joking uh so in here i keep my spare uh my spare my locking wheel nut key there's a usb and a 12 volt socket in there which is handy i would have liked this to fit my phone in there nice and easily but it doesn't quite fit uh, it still doesn't close you have an armrest which you have to really shove back in order to open I put my coffee in there and do you know what it stays nice and warm in there which is fantastic uh, you've got two cup holders at the front they never originally came with this edition I had to get this separately because the car was missing it excuse the dirtiness in there but there's plenty of storage space in the car and the armrest goes 
perfectly forward. The only th there's another thing I dislike, which uh, we're going to start going into the dislikes soon, is the fact that if you've got a bottle in here, it can sort of get in the way here of the armrest. But it, to be honest with you, it's not too noticeable. And like everything on every car, does it pass the horn test? No. I, I've said from the beginning of every car that I've had, if it doesn't pass the horn test, I don't want it. But I've, um, I've gone against my own judgment here and got it anyway. I, at the time, I really didn't have a choice, so. Currently showing as being 19 degrees outside, but it's quite muggy because it's raining. It, it's warm out there still. So the aircon's on with the cold seats and it is glorious. It's so comfy in this car. It's lovely to drive. Obviously, like I say, it's not a sports car, so handling-wise, it lacks round corners, but, you know, it gains in many other areas other than what the Insignia offered. And also, as well, one thing I'm, I do miss, but it's not too bad, is if I put it into reverse, there is no reverse camera. You've got parking sensors, and one thing I do like as well, if I put it in reverse again, if you watch the mirrors, I'll put it in reverse now, the mirrors dim, or the dip a little bit, so you can see behind you quite easily. So that's a bonus, I suppose. Uh, the glove box, typical French, absolutely no room in there at all. It could just about fit the uh, the books in there, but it serves a purpose. At, le at least it's not like the DS4, and you have to put it underneath the seat, which uh, is a benefit. And then above here as well, finally, uh, not only have you got your child sensor there, that's actually a child block, not a child sensor. That's your sensor there, so if you leave the car and uh, your children are still in the car, you can deactivate the alarm. And then you've got your SOS on here. Now, this would have had on start, but on, because this is a 2020 plate and not an 18 plate, they removed it for this, which I have no idea what it's for, other than maybe connected to the SOS if you wanted to... Uh, to contact somebody in an emergency perhaps but yeah i mean i'm happy with it now let's talk about the other good things with this car the first thing i like about the car is the fact it's got folding mirrors when not only when you lock it but also you can do it manually in the car so if you're in quite a tight area you can fold in and out the mirrors whenever you please the second thing I quite like and I'm quite impressed with is the car, I usually put 50 quids worth of fuel from when it's touching red and it pretty much fills it there. Now, I didn't fill this car to the brim and as you can see, since I last reset the computer, it's done 122 miles and we're on three quarters of a tank pretty much and we have done... 44 miles to the gallon as you can see there the mileage uh, the mileage it makes sense there basically it's 122 miles i've done 44 miles to the gallon and it's achieved that now the insignia would only do maybe 59 at its best but sometimes it'd do 49 52s and stuff like that so considering me driving this it's fairly similar it says i've got 348 miles of range still Considering this is a 1.2 turbo petrol, yeah, it's not as fast, but still driving it enthusiastically, I'm still achieving those figures. Do you know what? I can get rid of the AdBlue, get rid of the DPF, get rid of all the diesel uh, sensors and what have you, and this petrol will do exactly nearly the same mileage as that, but for cheaper fuel, cheaper tax, and cheaper insurance. Another thing I like is actually the boot. So, instead of reaching the button all the way down here and then lifting the boot up like this, which uh, isn't difficult anyways, instead of doing that, let's say you've got some shopping in your hands. Now this doesn't have like the Mercs do that thing where you wave your foot underneath it and then it opens. You press the middle button on the, uh, on the actual key and then listen, the boot pops, which means you can just lift it up with ease and you're not having to scavenge for the button underneath. Handy? Unnecessary? Nah. 
The fourth thing I like about this car is the fact that you can just step out of the car. You don't have to climb out of it because of the height of it. It's so easy to get in and out of. Now once you've opened the boot, the fifth thing I like about this car is you get two little flaps here on the side as well as a 12 volt socket. And when you pull this flap, you can freely see inside, which is uh, handy if you want to put anything down in here quite easily, or in case you're lazy and you don't want to press the button on the side of the seat. And whilst we do that as well, the seat, the front seat moves forward to maintain a straight and flat floor. Another thing I like is the fact that when you get in to the back, there's plenty of room and space in here to stretch your legs. My seat is in my own seat in position. I've got plenty of knee room, even with a sunroof, I've got plenty of headroom. And on a longer journey, this isn't too bad. And if you are wanting to be a little bit more comfortable, you can also put the armrest down and relax. And then you can see above through your panoramic roof and enjoy your surroundings, wherever you're driving by. So, quite like the atmosphere in this. Now, let's talk about the child seat in the car. So we've got this Graco 360 spin car seat, which has been an absolute godsend. So you press the button at the front here, turn the seat round, get them out, put them in, turn them back in place. And it's so easy to get your little one in and out of this car with being how tall it is, especially if you've got sciatica in your back like I do. And that's not saying it's difficult to get car seats into either because you do have isofix points right in front of you, obviously, in these fitted slots, which make it much easier for it to slide in and out of. And that's not to mention the biggest thing that I quite like about the car is the fact that even though this is a hatchback, you still get a huge boot with a false floor that you can lift up and there's more storage underneath there, or if you wanted to lower the floor so you can get a much deeper boot, which is an absolute godsend if you're wanting to move anything. Once the seats have gone flat down as well, you have a long loading bay. You still have a ski hatch in the middle if you wanted to chuck things through, if you can't put one of the seats down. It's an absolute godsend, this boot. It is massive. And do I miss the Insignia's boot space with this? Nah. Now let's get to the things that I absolutely dislike about the Groundland. The fact it's so common, they are absolutely everywhere and so are the 3008s. Although I can't really help that because I suppose every car is common in some sort of place, but these are everywhere. Whether it be this country or any other country, they are absolutely everywhere. I mean, so is this. This was common as muck as one point, but even so, the fact that they're absolutely everywhere that's one thing I don't like about it, but that's not actually down to the car. That's not the car's fault. So I can't really say much there. You guys thought it was because I was going to say it was French. Another thing I don't like about this car, which is, it's down to the spec of the car, I suppose. It's not the actual car's fault, again, is the fact that on this car, it doesn't have tinted windows. So it can get quite hot in here and sometimes quite glary from those windows. Whereas this back one here is tinted. So I don't know, the tinted and the normal windows, does it look right? Eh, I guess it does, possibly. I'd love to know what it'd look like without the tinted back windows, potentially there, but it doesn't bother me too much. It's just something I would have uh, preferred was tinted back and front windows and the panoramic roof, that's already tinted, so that could be left alone. Another thing I don't like about the car is the fact that it gets bad press everywhere you turn. You look at the forums and there are always bad reviews on these cars saying that they are absolutely unreliable. And well, I can kind of see why, to be honest. The wet belt engines aren't the most reliable, especially when they break or they tear or they fray and then they clog up the oil pickup. And because of all the inherent issues like the one that I'm experiencing, which I will show you now. So the car, ever since I've got it, has had a weird issue where it has a very prolonged start from sometimes. 
I figured out, I, th I think I know what it is, and it's to do with a dephaser pulley, where it's supposed to return the engine back to top dead centre so you can fire straight up when you turn the key. And apparently it's a common issue that when the belts are changed, the dephaser pulley doesn't do its job correctly. So it's going in the garage to get that done at some point. It doesn't affect the driving of the car, however. It's just a bit of a nuisance and it's a bit embarrassing when you've got a nice shiny black car that sounds like it's not going to start. And it does it intermittently, it doesn't do it all the time. As you've seen, I turned the car on earlier and it started up fine. But this is what's been happening. And besides that, there's another thing that I don't like. I just think it doesn't really scream the quality off of the car, really, considering this comes out of the same factory they make the insignia from. And that is, there's no LED lights in here. None whatsoever. And if you look at how flexible all the plastics are in here, they're not brilliant, to be quite honest with you. They do, but they're not fantastic, to be fair. And then there's another thing as well, which is another thing I don't like, with the interior especially, is the sun visor. It's, uh, it just feels cheap and nasty. You've got lights in there, but again, they're not LEDs. It just feels, I mean, this feels light as anything. It doesn't actually feel very sturdy. It just likes to go into places and not lock into the right places that I want them to be in. But hey who I suppose. Another thing I dislike with the car, with its interior as well, is this door panel. Everybody hates it because in the middle here these tend to break. It's you know, you put your arm on it, you go around the corner. And this is all you hear. And it's the same on the other side. And I'm not pressing on it hard either. Not brilliant. But they do have LED accents down the side of them, which is quite nice. Which is one thing I miss from the Insignia, because it doesn't have it around the centre. Another thing with storage, there is extra storage down here as well. Where I thought there would have been a, uh, a fuse box in there, but there isn't. And one other small thing as well, which I did miss from the Astra J days, was the fact that this has misted windscreen washers as opposed to the jets that the Insignia comes with. And if you haven't been able to note as well, you can just about see it, I don't know how well the camera picks it up, it has a heated front windscreen, which is marvellous in the winter. So I like that as well. I've already mentioned the horn as being one thing I don't like as well because it's, uh, it doesn't sound right with the car. But I think that concludes everything I don't like about the car and the things that I do like about the car. So other than maybe a few miscellaneous things and one big thing which is going to get sorted very soon, uh, the car is actually brilliant. And I'm starting to get used to the gear ratios which I mentioned in the last video. It's, it was so difficult to get used to but now I think I've cracked it. Anyways, that leaves one last thing to do in this video. Let's take it for a drive. Okay, we're getting soaked, so better close this window. That's another flaw that I uh, just like about the car, is it just lets rain in very easily, even if the window is open. I mean, look at the state of the door, it is wet. Right. Let's go this way. We can turn the uh, air conditioning off. We, uh, we don't need that. There is one other thing about the car, which in Wales at least I don't like. It's the fact that the cruise control isn't automatically set to on. You always have to switch it on, then set it every time you turn it on, on and off the car. Um, I'm sure you can probably get iCarly and Carly, whatever they call it, and um, and set that to be permanently on. 
but the lowest speed this car does in Wales is 25 miles an hour. It does not do 20 miles an hour as its slowest speed, which is a bit of a pain. Um, but yeah, otherwise the car is nice and quiet. It drives perfectly fine. Has still got plenty of pep in its step. So, cruise control off, foot down. It goes. It does the job sufficiently well and I quite like the noise it makes. Listen, foot down. Fourth gear. Fifth gear. And we're doing 70 miles an hour. Now we were going uphill. I'd like to just point that out as well. We were going uphill. Which, uh, you know, it's not slow by any stretch. It's, uh, it is pretty good though, I'm quite happy with it. Put your foot down and it does move. There is a bit of noise in the car, like road noise from the tyres and of course the reef being... almost all of the time that does that uh, that happened because um, the front windscreen started misting up so that, that's why that happened so let's just set it to demiss shall we <laughs> right so back as I was saying uh, the road noise is to do mostly because of the uh, the glass roof and because it's French, I mean, the DS4 is terrible for road noise, especially when rain hits the roof. It's, uh, it's so tinny. This, luckily, doesn't sound so tinny because it's got a glass roof. But you can still hear the, uh, <laughs> the outside elements, should we say. But driving the car, driving the Grand Land, everything's very easy to set. You're not fiddling around or putting your 90% of your concentration into the screen. It's just nice and easy to drive. And that is what you want from a car. Now, because it's raining, if I one touch the, uh, the back window, you can be able to see the rain falling off the car, which is quite nice. It's quite pleasant. Um, but driving this car, even in the rain and what have you, it's quite stable. It's comfy. It floats. It's uh, it's great. And uh, because I have, like I mentioned earlier, sciatica in my back, driving this, it's pretty comfy. The headrest is nice and spongy. The steering is direct and light. It turns wherever you want it to go. It's not by all means sporty. I wouldn't trust it going around the corner very quickly. But um, it does the job. And that is all this car was ever intended to do. It's got a heated steering wheel for the winter, heated windscreen, heated seats, cooled seats even. For a budget, this is a nice executive family car. And that is great. And for a 20 plate as well, apart from the starting issues, I have no fault with the car. The car drives brilliantly, it's so good on fuel, it's unbelievable how good on fuel it is, considering it's a petrol. The gear ratio is starting to come to me. I'm currently in fifth gear doing 50 and it wants me to go into sixth, but if I want more power output, I've got to ignore that. The LEDs at night are quite pleasant. I've always hated LEDs on some cars because they're just so ridiculously bright, they're just, oh, horrible. But, on the newer cars, including this one, they're designed in such a way that when you see an oncoming car, they dim. I've seen it, and to be fair, it doesn't affect the drivability of the car or the visibility even. Another point to mention, the brakes. Are they similar to the DS4? Oh yes they are. 
not as sensitive on the pedal, but you press it down far enough and it, whoo, it goes, it stops. Um, and that's brilliant. It's nice and I would say it's more controllable than the DS4 for the brakes in terms of a steady slowdown as opposed to a ooh, stop. Um, turn on the rear wiper because I can't see out of it. It's another thing I miss from the Insignia is I hardly ever had to use the rear wiper on the Insignia because it would just run off it anyway. <laughs> But now I've got used to the gear ratio, the car is nice and smooth to drive. And I've had to get used to it with the aircon because sometimes the aircon would drag the car down and it, it's all getting used to it. Getting used to what the car does differently. It's a completely different car, I've got to remember. It's not the same car. Now, in relation to parts, many people have questioned, well, you've just shot yourself in the foot and got the same thing. You've got another car that's going to be struggling for parts. Yes, I have. But did you know there is more than just Vauxhalls and cars in general struggling with parts? My full time job before making these videos, even to this day, is selling appliances. And parts for appliances are scarce, really scarce at the minute. It's not just car parts, and it's not just Vauxhalls, Fords, Audis, VWs, BMWs, other cars, other than this, Dacia, Dacia, that reuse all parts. There are people having difficulties getting certain parts for their cars. Huge waiting times, huge waiting lists, and expenditures as well, considering that to put your name on the slot, just like my insignia did, you had to pay up front. Now, this car has three years warranty with it. And one thing I have learnt from owning the insignia is pay the bloody thing off. The fact that I left the insignia so long without paying it off, that's what crippled me. And now I've learnt I have three years grace, essentially, with this warranty to pay this car off and either move on or just enjoy it without a warranty. <laughs> but at least I would own the car outright, no problem. I mean, I own it anyways, you know. Um, but that's one thing we didn't do with the Insignia and it bit me on the backside. It's also one thing that we're planning on doing with the DS4 is getting that paid off too because that's got issues even now. So even though in the last couple of videos we fixed the DS4, it's still suffering with problems. That's in a later video which you guys you guys will see. So we've made it halfway to our normal driving spot and the car is now at 128 miles since I've last refilled it. There will be an economy video on this car coming up soon also which I think will be quite interesting to see what I can get out of this car driving it sensibly and driving it equally stupidly um, as I do <laughs> so we've made it to halfway distance let's drive back and I'll speak to you when we get back
and that then concludes this video here on the Grand Land. So what do I think about it at a scale of 1 to 10? Well, at the minute, I'd have to give it probably a 7.5, only because of the failing start issue or the prolonged start issue. But otherwise, the car is really nice to drive. I like it. It's comfortable. I love the features it's got. And although, yes, it's got less features in some areas than the Insignia, it... It, it works its way back with other features like the heated windscreen, heated seats, heated and uh, heated steering wheel and cooled seats and just the overall size of it and of course the panoramic roof. It's massive and I love the effect it gives when it rains. I think it's quite cool. So anyways guys, if you like this video, why not leave it a like and subscribe and if you like to see more content and why not click that bell icon at the top corner of your screen. And until next time guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care and stay safe.